1991, White Dwarf 137, Andy Chambers wrote this fantastic article about his own Skaven army. Are uh, you wanted a Skaven army from that point and never had one? So welcome to Miniature Realms, my name is Stuart and as part of my ongoing series of painting tutorials leading up to the release of Warhammer The Old World, today is the turn of the Skaven Clan Rat. The miniature has been primed black and then Xenothor highlighted using an airbrush with a short, sharp, dry brush to really pick out the detail afterwards. If you're not sure what Xenothor highlighting is, I'll pop a little link for a video I've done to describe this now. But essentially what it gives you is a beautiful platform to work from with a bit of natural shadow built in that you don't get from a plain white or grey primed miniature. And to base coat I will mostly be using a mixture of contrast, express colour and speed paints. Now these will act as glazes and help provide a really nice natural highlight and shade in the base coat. First up, we're starting with the Vallejo Express Colour Dwarf Skin. It's a nice light skin tone that I'm going to use for all of the main skin areas on the rat. So the face area does blend into where the fur starts to grow, so you have to have a good idea of where that is, because I want to keep the rest of the miniature as clean as possible to really get the best out of this pre-highlight. So in the, and around the mouth, the cheekbones, the nose, hands, feet, and the tail as well. Now to add a little bit more depth and warmth to the skin areas, I'm going to use a little bit of a deep purple. So I'm just placing this in the ears, a little bit under the nose, in the recesses of the cheeks, around the eyes, across the knuckles, and then those segmented areas of the tail. The trick is to make sure you're adding this where there is some kind of shadow rather than on the highlighted flat areas. It adds the warmth, adds the depth without taking away where this highlight is in the first place. Now I'm using Contrast Garrick Sewer here for the base of the fur areas. You have lots of choices with, with rats, they have different shades of fur and if I was doing a whole unit I would mix up the browns and things but this is one of my favourite colours and I've decided to use it for the fur in this instance and I'm making sure that I'm applying it thick enough that it pulls in the recesses but you do have that natural shadow to help boost that but I don't want it so thick that it doesn't allow the peaks to show through and again giving you that natural highlight. Once we get to the hand where the fur would grow slightly, I just put a small amount the other side of that little wristband there and then using a bit of water I will feather it out. For the Skaven's clothing I'm going to use two colours. I'm going to go with Contrast Blood Angels Red for the hood. That's just a nice bright colour to really stand out and make the miniature pop. It's quite striking and works well against the pinks and the browns. And for the rest of the garments, I'm using Contrast Skeleton Horde. So a complete change from the bright red. This is a much more subtle colour. I didn't want to go with any strong browns. I wanted it to stand out from the fur. And this, going thinly over that Zenith or highlight, gives you some really nice natural colours anyway. You can do a subtle highlight and make it pop afterwards if you so wish, but looks great left as it is. For the wood of the shield and the spear shaft, I'm going to be using Citadel Contrast Wildwood. Just going back with a clean brush afterwards just to remove the tops to almost give it a highlight without having to go back afterwards with a lighter colour. You can do this on the front of the shield as well. Here I'm using Army Painter Speed Paint Hardened Leather. I'm going to use this for the little money pouch that's on the side, the leather sort of belt that goes around his waist, and also for that leather wrist strap. For the rat's red eyes, I want to use something that's not quite as strong as the Blood Angel's red, so I'm opting for the bowel red here. And I'm 
focusing around the edges of the eye socket and leaving it slightly lighter in the middle. Then using some contrast agarash dunes, it's a slightly yellowy color and I'm painting about half of the tooth in with the yellow to make it look a bit dirty and decayed. Onto the first of the metals, this is scale color or scale 75 decayed metal. It's a really nice brown base. Now we will be covering an awful lot of this with a silver color, but because the rats aren't gonna be looking after their weapons, I wanted to give it a really kind of dark brownish undertone. Now on top of that, I'm going to be using Scale Colour Thrash Metal. This has actually got some warmer tones to it, almost some brownsy, bronzy undertones, and it's perfect for going over this, rather than the kind of the bluer, colder metals that you might find with your sort of chainmail gum metal type effects, which I'll often go for at this stage. Once those metallics are dry, I'm going to give them a subtle shade of Agrax Earthshade, focusing around the rivets here on the shields and in patches on the spear itself. And there we are with a very nicely done tabletop miniature. You've got natural highlight and shadow from the Xenothor. The face is quite characterful and the metals look pretty good. You could base them and away he goes in a big block of 40 and you'd be sorted. But I'm going to do my usual and carry on and add some further highlights. The first of those will be Flat Earth, model colour from Vallejo. And it's the first highlight on the fur. Being careful here not to cover all the original colours and just focusing where that natural highlight is already showing through from that zenithal underpainting. Then using model colour beige brown for a further subtle highlight again. Each of these stages are very much optional, it's just something I wanted to do to make it really pop. So I'm adding even smaller areas of highlight, just the ends of the strands of the hair or the tops of the highlight. Now using model colour, basic skin tone and medium, about a 50-50 mix, I find that just smooth this skin colour out a little bit and makes it go a bit smoother. I'm doing very, very subtle highlights. I already like the skin as it is, but I just want to make it pop a little bit more. So I'm using very, very faint lines where the light will catch the most round the tops of the eyes, the nose, then later on really making the segments on that tail pop by using the same mix to just your subtle highlights where the light catches there, not necessarily all the way around on both sides. Now on to model colour dark sand, I'm just going to use this to highlight some of the Skaven's clothing. It looks pretty cool as it is, but if you really want to make it pop and stand out, you can just pick out some of those highest points and really, really kind of bring it to the fore a little bit more. And then you can push that even further with a little bit of white. And here I'm using model color off white. So first off, I'm just using it to pick out the dots on the eyes just to really make them stand out. Then to pick out the teeth, leaving some of that dirty yellow in the recesses. And finally onto that clothing again, this time being very, very subtle, but just going towards the ends of the highest areas and just making that really stand out. Here I'm using Game Air Silver to really push the top highlights on the metal. So just a little bits around the edges on the tops of the rivets, on the very edges of the blade, painting in some scratches and marks. You could sponge this on if you wanted to as well. And here is some rust from Dirty Down. It used to be called Model Mates when I first started using this stuff. It's great that it's available back on the market again. I'm just using this to dot around the edges of the rivets in certain areas and make the shield look a little bit more corrupted and corroded. And I'll be doing the same on the end of the spear. Now this stuff is great. If you apply it in small areas, you, it looks quite dark. If you apply it in large areas, it dries out and looks like a drier kind of rust. It's pretty versatile. You can thin it with water. Water, as if the rust has run as well. Really, really fun stuff. 
Now adding some basing texture on there. I'm adding this before the final stages because I want to give it time to dry, ready for the washes afterwards. Now this is from Vallejo, it's earth texture, it's dark earth. It's probably their most kind of standard or versatile version in terms of color and it's just great value. So I recommend it very much. And then while that earth texture is drying, it's time to highlight the final stage, which is the red. And this is Citadel Evil Suns. I'm just, again, like I did with the other highlights, picking out the very topmost areas and just making them pop a little bit more. And now again, very much optional, but using Wild Rider Red to further enhance those highlighted areas. Now that that basing texture is fully dry, it's time for a coat of Agrax Earthshade. And then when that Agrax Earthshade is fully dry, it's time for some Burnt Umber and Light Sienna pigments. Now I'll just brush these in dry into the texture of the base and blow away the excess. It sticks in very, very nice. I'm not using any fixative where this is on the miniature. And you can see there, the final texture is pretty cool. Now here's some suitable tufts. These are two mil ones from a war paint figures. And it's blighted marsh scorched earth, I believe. Then after that, using another Vallejo effects paint, and this is thick mud, European mud. And this is more of an effect than a full basing texture. And the thicker you apply it, the wetter it looks at the end. I'm just using it to add texture by splashing over the whole of the base, adding bits into the grass themselves. And you'll see that the pigment shows through in patches. And it, again, it just looks like a lovely, dirty, horrible bit of land that the Skaven has crawled out from. Um, and it's a slightly different effect than, than you might have seen on some of my previous bases where they're a little bit more verdant and things. But I think this suits the miniature better and then as always for me finishing off with a black rim on the base and I say that but I'm always tempted to get out the blood for the blood god and add a little bit to the end of the blade again less is more here use a little bit of water to to thin it out I'm starting to get the grips with this new formulation now I have my old pot for years and it's changed slightly I quite like this um, sometimes I add a little bit to the ground and things, but here I'm mostly focusing on the end of the spear and maybe a little splash on the shield. And there we have it, one Skaven Slave, and I really enjoyed doing this. It makes me want to paint a whole army. I've got no time for that right now. Too many other projects to finish first, but once I've done my planned Warhammer, the Old World projects, I may be tempted to go back into a whole army. As much as it will be painful to paint so many of them, they are so much fun. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Have you painted any scaving yourself recently? What methods did you use? I know a, a big brown rattle can is very, very tempting when you've got hundreds of scaving slaves to paint, but I'll definitely be interested to find out what you thought of this, whether there's any techniques you might like to take and use yourselves, or whether you have any hints or tips and things for me that you think that might help me out in the future as well. If you are new to the channel, please do check out all the other videos. There's lots of Warhammer related painting tutorials, there's loads of other game systems and things as well. So you may well find something you like. If you do, please consider subscribing. If you've enjoyed the video, please do give us a like. It really, really helps me out. And thanks very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you soon.